Yeah, this is a different course than the one Dick was talking about. Uh, it has some similarities, a little bit different of a target audience. There's actually a bridge maintenance course out there right now. It's a four-day bridge maintenance course. Has anybody ever taken it? Hey, one person. All right, good. Oh, Ed, yeah. oh, Ed. okay, two people. It's been around, I think, for about 10 years. Uh, it needed some upgrading. Uh, also, uh, there's a thing about adult learning techniques. It was really kind of a pure lecture uh, type of class. I know uh, Anwar from Federal Highway, he was teaching it. He kind of took it on himself and made it a little bit more interactive. But it was time to upgrade it. and. Um, and that task was given to uh, Bremen Peterson, who I work for. We have a contract with Federal Highway to develop some training. So this is a different course from the one that uh, Dick was talking about. Uh, Dick was talking about uh, bridge preservation. This one's bridge maintenance. Uh, ours has uh, three facets to it. We have a reference manual. We have some web-based training, which is similar to uh, what Dick was talking about. Then we also have four days of instructor-led training. Um, adult learning techniques. Uh, Bridge maintenance workers is our target audience. Actually, everybody in this room should take this course. I really like the course, uh, supervisors, bridge management engineers, but the target audience for this was bridge maintenance workers. They're, they're a tough crowd to please. They, uh, they're very hands-on, so we, we knew that from the start, and uh, we even know it more after the pilot we just gave last month. But uh, anyway, I'd like to step through uh, what we developed, uh, the reference manual, web-based training, for those who don't know, uh, National Highway Institute is kind of the training arm of Federal Highway Administration, so this is the way they take some funds and get training out to um, the people out there. So uh, there was three prongs to this. The, uh, the lower left there is our bridge uh, maintenance reference manual. That is going to be a great guide for everybody here. It's over a thousand pages. Uh, we did our final, 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 final upgrade on it uh, <laughs> yesterday. And I'm hoping it'll be out on the street in a month. We're going to charge uh, several hundred dollars for it. No, we're not. It's going to be free on the FHWA website, so that's going to be pretty good. You have to print it out yourself, though. Um, we didn't want to have these uh, bridge maintenance workers sit in the classroom too long. Four days is actually pretty long, so we have some prerequisites. We had like a six-hour web-based training that gets into a lot of the, some of the basics if some of these maintenance workers are not familiar with bridges themselves. We get into some anatomy and different talks. And then finally, um, if you've ever been in an NHI class, you, you, you get into a classroom setting, usually limited to about 30 participants and then a couple instructors. So the reference manual, 25 chapters. We've got checklists. We've got decision aid matrices. We've got over 1,000 pages. We've got 25 chapters. Uh, you can't see these table of contents. So I'm going to step through. We do, again, uh, bridge maintenance workers. Uh, this, this reference manual goes to a much broader audience. The instructor-led training was for the maintenance workers. We're going to talk about bridge management, anatomy, um, bridge mechanics, so some of the just basic engineering terms, if you want to talk about tension or shear. Um, we've got a lot of information on concrete. This is going to be a great reference manual on that. We start getting into some of the elements, approach slabs, decks, railings, drainage, superstructures, bearings. We could have a great chapter on bearings, substructures, culverts, channels, masonry, movable bridges. So we've got a nice chapter on movable bridges if you're involved with uh, maintenance of movable bridges. Decision aids. We've got a lot of different decision aids. We talk about uh, bridge cleaning. We have checklists if you're going to go out and clean your bridges. If you're going to lubricate your bearings, we've got checklists. We've got procedures, deck repairs, fiber reinforced polymer repairs, steel truss repairs, inspection reports. This was kind of interesting. We thought it would be good to have in this reference manual in the appendix a example inspection report. So we had seven uh, different state DOTs uh, furnish uh, bridge inspection reports, and they're all over the place. They go from two pages to 70 pages. We came up with a composite bridge inspection report, so you might want to check that out. We try to take some of the high points of each of the inspection reports, and we did uh, cater it to the new uh, bridge element um, inspection guidelines. Suggested procedures, uh, there's a lot of these in the manual, and they're suggested because there was a little bit of debate. Um, you know, if you're going to do some deck repairs, uh, do you want to put a bonding agent down? Do you, or some, some agencies thought that dries out too fast, it becomes a bond breaker. So we have a lot of procedures in there, but we kind of uh, put a little bit of a caveat on that, that they're, uh, they're not uh, directives. We got a lot of tips in the reference manual. We have different little rec marks, recommendations. We do a lot with uh, what to look for. You know, if the maintenance workers are out there, they're doing some kind of maintenance, maybe they're going to see something wrong with the bridge, bring it up to the... Uh, to maybe their supervisor or an engineer, so we have this thing called one to call the engineer. 
So that's the reference manual. Like I said, we were final, final, final. We, had, we made some changes based on some comments that were made during the instructor-led portion of the course and the web-based training. But that should be on the web here very shortly, and uh, the price is right. Web-based training is another thing that's going to be the price is right. There's going to be no charge for this. Even if you don't take the instructor-led training, you could go down uh, on and you could take eight hours of online training. It basically covers the early chapters in the reference manual. It covers introduction to bridge maintenance, even a little bit about management, anatomy, concrete basics. So some of the things that we thought once we got the participants into the class, we wanted to really get down to the uh, procedures and how to fix things. So one uh, example web-based training course here is Introduction to Bridge Maintenance. Uh, Dick really didn't go into this, but it is kind of cool. If you could sit home and you could go through this and you can navigate, you know, there's an outline tab. It's narrated, so maybe you could listen to Dick talk on for eight hours. I don't know if you were the narrator, Dick. You could, you could search on the entire course for different keywords. So this whole idea of uh, NHI trying to realize that it's hard to get people into a classroom, it's kind of nice to have this type of web-based training. So one of the example modules is Bridge Maintenance Management. Okay, good. That's module two here. So some of the things we might talk about in bridge maintenance management, we get a little bit into element level inspection. We even get into QA, QC, bridge inspections. Again, you're not really going to talk about this too much in a uh, instructor-led course, but this is great for web-based training. If you're not that interested in a per certain uh, lesson, you could always hit the next button <laughs> and move on. Uh, so now I want to really concentrate on the instructor-led training. It's four days. We cover seven modules. It's, it's lecture-based. There's uh, usually two instructors. We had a couple extra because we were trying to get everybody acclimated. Um, four days. Again, I thought it was a little bit long, for, uh, but there's a lot of material to cover. A lot of material to cover. We wanted to make it hands-on. We wanted to do a lot of interaction. Um, we've got lots of things. I think we have 30 videos. 30 videos. We've got a lot of different types. We even have a case study. We go through, and again, um, trying to tell a bridge maintenance worker on the first day that, hey, at the end of this week, you're going to present on, on a bridge that needs to be fixed and how to fix it. It was a little daunting, so <laughs> we have some ways to correct that now. But they actually did a great job. On the last day, they went up and they had a case study and they talked about how they were going to fix a bridge and actually maybe prevent things from happening in the future. So this was our, uh, our pilot here. This is the uh, four instructors. I was one of them. We looked a lot worse at the end of the four days. We were all beat up, black eyes and everything like that. Like I said, it was a tough crew, you know. I had a bridge maintenance worker come up to me and say, yo, Eric, you know, I like listening to you, but you know, uh, my boss just tells me to kind of, you know, jackhammer out that spall, you know. I really don't really want to know about, you know, how uh, rebar corrodes, you know. And I don't know why, Rock, that was my Rocky Balboa imitation. I don't know why he was in the classroom there, but, uh, but it was kind of tough, but I mean, you know, there's reasons to be there. And, and I think in the end, you know, uh, there's some tweaks to make, but it was a very good course. You can see in the back there, actually, we have a procedure activity. We have 12 steps to repair an abutment to go through. We actually borrowed that from the Michigan um, Department of Transportation. They got a great program there. So that was a nice little activity. We had course, activi course objectives, identify common deficiencies. So again, they're not inspectors, but they are out there with the bridges. You know, um, investigate proper bridge maintenance procedures, identify situations of repairs that warrant the involvement of an engineer. When we say that, you know, maybe raising something to your supervisor, so how to notice things. Uh, we did get debriefed every day when we did this pilot. That's how they do it when you, when you come up with this training. And um, we had some good hands-on activities and how-to, but they, these guys and girls were really hungry for, you know, the how-to part. So we are going to kind of revise that a little bit. Uh, we like these course objectives, but that uh, fourth bullet there about investigate proper bridge maintenance pr procedures, maybe we got to put a little how in there and get into it. But let me give you a little example. We did, this is module three, maintenance and preservation techniques for special deck elements. We got into expansion joints. We had some learning outcomes about uh, identifying them, common defects, and maybe even how to fix them. So we got into certain things, the purpose of an expansion joint, uh, does anybody know Pete Wycamp? All right, Pete Wycamp, he's you know, big on the East Coast. Pete Wycamp's one of our instructors right here. He's talking about comp and expansion joint defects, and here he's talking. He actually got tripped up a little bit. He's been coming to these conferences too much. He started talking about different um, vendors and proprietors. Oh, you got to use this. You got to use this joint. So you got to do this. You got to do that. And I go, no, no, we got to keep it kind of generic. You know, we should really, people should really come to these, this conference to learn more about the vendors. You know, we had to kind of keep it a little generic, but Pete had a good time and um, 
He does, he does know his stuff. He's a true subject matter expert. We went through a lot of uh, suggested repair procedures. Uh, this one has to be for uh, as, asphalt plug joint. I actually had the opportunity to go up to Vermont, take some sequential pictures, take some videos. We showed all that. Um, one of the issues with this course, uh, it might have to be a little fluid. Uh, they don't do asphaltic plug joints in Michigan. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things we could do. We could, we could, you know, a little learning. We could, we still want to talk about these different types of joint systems, but maybe concentrate more on what they're involved with. And, and part of that might involve a little bit of a survey with the host agency beforehand. We always try to take the, uh, the lesson and, and tie it back to this great reference manual. This is going to be a great reference manual. So this particular one here, and we talked about asphaltic plug, then we tied it back to the uh, installations, and we tied it back to we have a job aid checklist if you're going to go out and do an asphaltic plug joint. We showed a lot of videos. I'm going to skip through Bridge this. washing should occur by getting up close and personal with the superstructure. Joints and bearings over piers should be given special consideration. All right, so that's another thing we tried to point out here a little bit with, uh, with just having a... Um, you're out there, you're doing some maintenance. Let's say there was something wrong with that bearing. So that's kind of a thing we try to point out in the course. If you look right down here, what is this that we had? That is a toilet paper roll. We actually did some um, hands-on with proper bedding of a culvert. And that toilet paper roll represents a flexible metal steel culvert. I think the guys really like that. And like I said, I think if we had the whole course, we had about, I would say, 30% of the course, we had a lot of hands-on stuff. We had a mud jacking demonstration. We had a person come up and we were injecting some, uh, some, um, <laughs> some stuff underneath that we were, we were seeing here. If we could get that uh, approach lab level, we actually had a blowout. I hope they don't find the stain we left on that table down in Michigan there. We had some other uh, videos too. I want to just go through this really quick. We, uh, we have videos. We went out to uh, Michigan and actually filmed some. Uh, this happens to be a healer sealer operation. We talked about things with shot blasting, a lot of kind of type of things that were talked about in this meeting. So we really try to bring that home and talk about it. So another video we had, this one now is more, this is the, uh, this is now, oh, there, we talked about this. I remember this was coming up in the course, but this is now a thin epoxy overlay. So what's the difference between a thin epoxy overlay and a helis sealer? What, what kind of uh, deck preparation do you want to have? What kind of material do you want to use? So anyway, we really got in there, took a lot of videos, really talked about uh, deck preparation. I tell you, I was uh, <laughs> trying to get the filming out of Michigan there, and some of that shot blast came at me. I'm glad I had my safety glasses on. That stuff is, it could sting you. We even did some uh, demonstrations here. This is, uh, we had a little table off to the side that we did a little bit of demonstrations on. This is steel rusting. We took a simple experiment. We took some steel Brillo pad. We added in some hydrogen peroxide, which adds extra oxygen, and we had the steel in the water, and we showed people what happens when you put a lot of salt on your bridges, and then they tend to rust. We did a case study. This was our module seven. We started this on the first day, worked all the way through. We had bridge maintenance workers on the last day get in front of a crew, the group, and talk about how they read an inspection report, found some different defects, worked together as a group. We even had these little tablets, and they had their reference manuals on that tablet. They could do some searching, and they would have to come up with some ideas. So that was a little bit of a challenge. You know, uh, there was other engineers there. We actually had representatives from Minnesota and Indiana. They were interested in the course. And again, this course is going to hit the streets pretty soon, and we hope everybody um, takes advantage of that. But there was some. It was an inspection report, and this these. Uh, um, these bridges were actually straight out of the appendix of the ASHTO uh, Bridge Element Inspection Manual. So it's taking what's in the ASHTO new Element Inspection Manual and now saying, hey, what, what do you do to repair these things or prevent them in the first place? So the pilot, uh, you know, ended in, we had a lot of debriefs, and one of the things we're working on right now is a little bit of a host agency questionnaire. For example, uh, we, t we talked about two hours on uh, timber bridges. It's part of the course. But uh, there's only seven timber bridges in the state of Michigan. So they weren't, too, they, they were a little sleepy. Um, Minnesota was there, they kind of liked it. So we're looking at maybe some optional modules. We thought about maybe, and this is something that I'm gonna send to Federal Highway actually this afternoon, is uh, we're developing a little bit of a host agency questionnaire, kind of kind of cater the course a little bit. And I know that's a little tough, that's really not the way NHI structures things, but I think we could work it out with this one, especially in some of the modules. So, 
that reference manual, spring of 2016, it was supposed to be out in the fall. We did make some revisions based on some of the comments that came back when we developed the web-based training. The web-based training is done. We did a pilot. So um, I think they're just going through. They do what's called a soft launch right now. And HI is working. I just make sure all the bugs are taken out of it, that when the person hits the next button, it just doesn't go back to the beginning or anything like that. We did the uh, pilot course. That's the initial course um, in Lansing last month. We have, uh, it's on the web right now. You can request this course. We're going to Connecticut in October. We're going to uh, Florida in July. We're going to uh, Ohio in August. And uh, we'd really like to come out to the West Coast here. I know Chris has been mentioned possibly coming out doing some things for his people up there in Washington. One of the things we're still working on that's part of the whole task order is um, um, we felt that, uh, well, FHWA felt that some of the things, bridge coatings, movable and masonry, maybe they were better off having their own separate web-based training. So there's going to be two to three hour web-based training being developed on bridge coatings two to three hours on maintenance of movable bridges and two to three hours of maintenance of masonry bridges. So with that, uh, maybe we could do something one time where we have everybody take the course for four days and then we can morph into one of these meetings or something, that'd be great. But um, appreciate your time. Anybody have any questions or Dick and I or Mike? <laughs>